A reclusive Russian mathematician has been awarded a million dollars for proving a theory which has baffled some of the finest brains for a century. Grigory Perelman came up with the Poincare conjecture, which helps in the understanding of three-dimensional shapes. Now, it is one of seven so-called millennium problems set out by the Massachusetts-based Clay Mathematics Institute, which offered a prize for the solution of any of them. But uh, Perelman, who lives in St. Petersburg here in Russia, has little contact with the outside world and is known for ignoring plaudits for his work. He actually first put forward his theory eight years ago and in 2006 received Mathematics' most prestigious prize, the Fields Medal, which he then refused to collect. Well, we're joined now live by Sir John Ball. He's the former president of the International Mathematical Union and uh, indeed he knows this uh, genius very well and personally. Uh, good day to you, sir. Thanks for being on the program with us tonight. Intriguing story, this one. In, in layman's terms, can you first of all tell us how this discovery could be applied to real life? Does it have indeed any practical use? Probably no uh, immediate practical use, no, but it's about a very uh, basic object, the sphere, and so it's, it, the methods uh, connected with the proof will, will be, I'm sure, in the end applied to all sorts of different kinds of problems, but no direct application, no. Now, you spent, uh, as I mentioned, there two days back in 2006 trying to persuade him to accept the Fields Medal, which is, as I mentioned, mathematics' most prestigious award. Why did he refuse? Well, I think it was a complicated uh, set of reasons. I mean, I, I spent two days talking to him, and I think he'd made up his mind before I, before I arrived, so there was not much chance of, uh, of dissuading him. But I, I think that he felt alienated from the mathematical community, and so he didn't want to be seen as a figurehead for the mathematical community. I think this was the main reason. I, I'm, certainly he doesn't like publicity, but uh, perhaps that was a secondary uh, reason. I said he has little contact with the outside world. You've met him personally. What sort of man is Mr. Perlman? Well, uh, when we first started talking, I, I'd never met him before. It was a little difficult. We, we didn't, uh, you know, we, we didn't know each other. He was, uh, he's quite reserved. He's, um, but, but then we, uh, we, we started getting on quite well, and then it was like talking to anybody else. He, he's a man of high principles, I think, and uh, he's careful with what he says, and he remembers things very vividly, uh, conversations and incidents and so on. Um, I found him very polite and interesting to talk to. We didn't just talk about mathematics and the Fields Medal, we talked about all sorts of things. So, John, four years on, do you think anything may have changed now that one million dollars is on the table? Do you think this time he'll accept uh, the award, then? I don't know. Um, I asked him uh, back in 2006 uh, whether he would uh, accept, accept the Clay Prize, and he gave a, a very nice answer, I think. He said, uh, you're from the, you've offered me the Fields Medal, and, I, and you're from the International Mathematical Union, and I'm talking to you, and if the Clay Foundation offer me the Clay Prize, then I will talk to them. <laughs> so the mystery continues. Thank you ever so much, Sir John yes. Ball, former president of the International Mathematical Union, being on the line with us tonight uh, from the UK. It's appreciated.